thanking Pro Tem, Greg Treat, and all the legislators who are here with us today. Thank you so much for your effort uh, this session. Uh, Speaker of the House, Greg or uh, Charles McCall, I don't think he's with us today, but um, we would not be here without his leadership in passing this historic edu education reform this session. Uh, and thank you. Yes. And thank you all for your commitment to crafting policies uh, that put students first. And that's really why we're here today. So I also want to thank our state superintendent, Joy Hoffmeister. Thank you for your leadership, for being here today. And a special thanks to our Secretary of Education, Ryan Walters, uh, who is relentlessly pursuing uh, our policy to put students first, uh, which... Which brings me to our most important guests today. All of our K through 12 students from across the state of Oklahoma, welcome to the state capitol. We're so honored that you're here. <laughs> this school year has been a roller coaster for all of you. I know that. Uh, but I want to congratulate you as you've adapted, you continue to change and learn. You are truly the future of the state of Oklahoma. And that's why it's so important for me to make sure our education system is working for you. During my State of the State address, I pledge to strengthen our education system through policies that put students first. And I can confidently say that's exactly what we've done. Our fight for students started back uh, when some schools refused to offer in-person learning. If any of you in this room were governor and you heard the stories of the single moms and the single dads that called my office and said, Governor, what am I supposed to do? I have to go to work during the day. My first graders at home, there's no possible way they're learning how to read via Zoom. All the other schools in the state are open. We have to get our schools open. And we continue to fight as well as everybody here in this room to make that happen. And we knew that the data said that you could go to school safely, you could learn in person with your teachers. And I was determined to do everything I could to make that happen for every single one of you. And eventually we did just that. Now I'm so proud every single school district in the state is open for in-person learning. That's not the case. That is not the case that if you are uh, unfortunate to live in another state besides the great state of Oklahoma. When the legislative session began, we crafted policies to give you the best chance to get the best education. Because we knew that uh, education was not a one size fits all. You and your parents should have the freedom to attend the best school for you, regardless of your zip code or where you live. And wherever you go, the money should follow you. In Oklahoma, we fund students, not systems. There's 700,000 students in the state of Oklahoma, kids school age. We want to make sure we, we give you, the student, the opportunity that you need to get the best education uh, for your future. From there, we expanded funding potential for the Equal Opportunity Scholarship Program. This is going to help low- and middle-income households with more education options. We made sure that no school could teach that one race or sex is superior to another race or sex. That every first grader would learn history without being labeled as an oppressor or to feel guilt or shame based on their race or their sex. We created the Redbud Fund to create a level playing field for poor rural or charter schools. And just yesterday, I signed a budget that invests a record $3.2 billion in our public education system.
That's not even included all the property taxes that goes into public education as well, bringing it over. I think it's about 10 billion. Is that right? Yeah. A little over 10 billion. Every step of the way, every policy decision was, was made with you in mind, the students. And I'm proud of our work. And it is a great honor to have you all here today celebrating what has become the first of Oklahoma's education turnaround year. And you're all invited after this to head downstairs to a fun reception that we've set up for you. And Secretary Walters has told me there's going to be some pizza, which I'm trying to clear my schedule. Yes, I did, this, I did the exact same thing. And uh, he's going to give you a little more detail about that. But first, I want to turn it over to our great pro tem, a true leader and the guy that runs the state senate, my good friend, pro tem Greg Treat. Thank you all for being here. This is uh, probably the 10th or 11th press conference I've done in here with the governor this session, but this is the most packed I've ever seen this room. It's awesome to see all the kids, especially and the parents. Thank you to my legislative colleagues, to the superintendent, to the secretary, to Speaker McCall, who worked uh, together on this. But Governor, I've got to give it to you. When I, two weeks ago or less than that, I was at Remerge for an event uh, and ran into Susan and um, got to take a tour of Positive Tomorrow's, the new location. I hadn't been there yet. And it tore at my heartstrings. And I didn't think at that point that we could deliver on the Opportunity Scholarship Fund. I thought all hope was lost in getting it done this session. I was reinvigorated after seeing what we do for those families that, that use Positive Tomorrow's as a transition in their life. And I came back renewed trying to get that done. And I can tell you it wouldn't have happened without Governor Stitt partnering up to make sure it got across the finish line. Uh, we spoke in my office and I delivered what I thought was the bad news, the once again we got close but not there. And he didn't give up. He didn't give up on you all. We didn't give up on you all. And we were able to get it across the finish line. The Equal Opportunity Scholarship Act will be the most transformative thing we've done in my time in the Capitol. My, my daughter Olivia here, who will be going into the fourth grade, we are blessed to have a tremendous public school system that she's a part of, but I know many people are limited by their zip code, many people are limited by just the area they grow up and the income they have. We are fortunate, we are blessed, but opportunity should abound across all of Oklahoma, regardless of your income, regardless of your zip code. Thank you all for being here. Thanks for the parents being here. Thanks for the advocates making sure we got it across the finish line. Thank you to the advocates Dave Rader for trying to run this two years ago. And to Julie Daniels threatening me with my life if we didn't get it done uh, this year. I appreciate that. Uh, Governor, I, I am extremely honored to be part of this. Uh, you don't get to see the fruits of your labor very often in this building. And to see these beautiful children uh, here uh, just makes me emotional. So thank you for being here. This is huge. I get to turn it over to my good friend, uh, Representative John Eccles. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Well, I want to echo what the pro tem said, what an honor it is to be up here and what an honor it is to, I've got to speak at several of these press conferences, but with, with all you guys and gals up front, this is by far the most fun because it reminds us why we did what we did. If you, this is the single greatest year for education in the history of the state of Oklahoma, and it was all accomplished this year. The state of Oklahoma sent a clear message. What we were about is all students, with no students being left behind. We had a record budget in the public education system. 
We had, as you heard the pro tem say, transformative change through the, the expansion of the Opportunity Scholarship, which will transform the state of Oklahoma, which I was honored to be able to carry on the House floor after trying to get it done for three straight years. And then we had the Redbud Fund to show that, that our, our charter schools are public schools and they deserve to be funded at the same level as everyone else. What you heard from true transformative leaders and, and Governor Stitt, Pro Tem Greg Treat, our, our State Superintendent, Superintendent Hoffmeister, what you've heard from transformative leaders is that we will continue to be about every student in the state of Oklahoma. That from our side, you all have value, you all deserve opportunity. One of the things I like to say, because I see what it's done in my own life, Education changed the trajectory of my parents' lives. And because of that, it changed the trajectory of my life, which then changed the trajectory of my children's lives. What I want you to hear from us is that we are not done. We are not done fighting for every child in the state of Oklahoma, and we will continue to fight against those who are willing to leave children behind because they don't fit their version of what traditional education should look like. I want to say thank you for coming. Thank you for continuing the fight. Um, thank you to these two gentlemen and to Speaker Charles McCall. Had they not continued that fight, we would not have got over this line. Um, Speaker Charles McCall very much willed it into existence, especially on the Opportunity Scholarship side on the House. Um, Pro Tem Greg Treat was not willing to let this issue go, and Governor Stitt showed incredible leadership. And speaking of incredible leadership, it's also my honor now to turn this over to a leader in the House and the architect of the Redbud Fund, Vice Chairman Representative Kyle Hilbert. Thank you. Thank you, Leader Eccles. Uh, this session, the, as has been mentioned many times before, the education agenda was student focused, but how we delivered better outcomes for students was by empowering parents and empowering teachers. At the beginning of this session, we passed legislation that said that parents get to choose the public school that best fits their child's needs, and not that they're going to go to the they're not going to be forced to go to the public school that they're assigned to just because somebody decades ago drew boundaries that said that. We also made sure that the money follows the student to that public school that they attend, and that's how we empowered parents this session as well as through Senate Bill 1080, which which has already been mentioned. We empowered teachers through the budget and putting $137 million in the funding formula, putting an increase to the textbook line item of $27 million, putting a targeted investment of $38.5 million through the Redbud Fund into the poorest school districts in the state, ensuring that teachers have the resources that they need to be successful. And by the way, in doing that level of funding, it also restored 1017 class size mandates ensuring that the class sizes that we have in lower elementary schools are manageable for teachers. Very exciting. And, and I, I'm excited also to have with me today some students that attend a school district um, that will greatly benefit from this. I have seven students here from Bristow. Some of them ended up here behind the, the, the podium. And some other students from Bristow, as well as Bristow um, uh, School Board President Julie Bell. Appreciate you all being here. But um, that investment in schools like Bristow, Kellyville, Sepulpa. I know Lawton Superintendent Kevin Heim is here and $1.8 million. And, and, and that investment in these school districts, that's going there because these school districts have been chronically underfunded for years. And um, last thing I want to say, I do appreciate Chair, Chairwoman Baker, Chairman McBride on the House side. And I know it's normal in these press conferences for House members to talk about House members, Senators to talk about Senate members. But I do want to say nobody took more arrows this session than Senator Zach Taylor. And I think he should be commended for the, the work that he did this session. A lot of this accompl these accomplishments don't happen without Senator Taylor, so appreciate that. <laughs> and, and with that, um, I want to turn it over to Superintendent Hoffmeister. Um, her team was incredibly helpful, um, as well as uh, Sean Heim with OSSBA in crafting the Redbud Fund. And you know, it's often said in this building that a bill is a great bill when nobody's happy. But you know what? You can craft legislation in this bill that everybody's happy. And we delivered success for all students, all public school students. And appreciate Superintendent Hoffmeister, and I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. All right. 
And truly, the leadership of those standing here, and the governor, thank you. We thank um, our, our um, leaders in both the House and the Senate, um, President Pro Tem Treat, Speaker McCall, Leader Eccles, um, our um, chairs of our education committees and, uh, and appropriation committees. We thank you. It took a lot of work. But everyone here today is here because they identify with something that was passed this year that really met a need, really met a need for students, a need for classrooms, the support that students need. It met a need for families, a need for families to be able to um, have a say in their child's education, how it's delivered, where they go. All of that is good and why we're here. 229, the Red Bud funding bill for um, these provisions, not just for our charter schools that have um, not had those resources, but also 300, over 300 uh, traditional schools as well that have not had the ability to give those resources in a lab or a particular uh, crumbling infrastructure that needs support. This is potentially transformative and a great victory for all of Oklahoma's school children and school families, and I thank everyone here. I will conclude by saying it is a phenomenal time to look back at where we were last year. Who could have imagined we would be in this place right now, a year later, record state funds to public education, support for children no matter where they go to school, we are seeing something big happen in Oklahoma, and it is the engagement of families, the engagement of communities, helping our students be ready for their next steps in learning, ready for post-secondary pursuits, and ready for life. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everybody. I wanna reiterate and thank you for House and Senate leadership that did a dr tremendous job this session put, putting all of our students first. So first of all, what a tremendous session this has been for Oklahoma students. And guys, I'm a teacher, so I just wanna talk to you for a minute, okay? I want you all to look around the room for just a second. All these adults around the room, they're all here because they believe in you. They believe in you as an individual kid. They believe that you can change the world. Every single one of you, every single one of you can change the world. That's what everybody in this room is here to tell you guys today. It doesn't matter if you go to a traditional public school. It doesn't matter if you go to a charter school. It doesn't matter if you go to a private school. You all have a unique set of talents and can change the world. And they have all invested in you so that the state of Oklahoma can be a better place. Because this group of adults around the room made the decision that investing in our students is the best thing they could do for our state, to empower you, to empower your parents, and to make sure that you have a quality education. So guys, I want you to remember that when you leave today, that all of these adults from foundations, from House and Senate leadership, school board members, all of these adults, head of all these organizations, that's what they're telling you today, that you guys are the future of Oklahoma and you can change the world. Thank you so much and thank you young people for what all you've done this school year. Ladies and gentlemen, or kids specifically, uh, I'm going to have to call Secretary Walters back up because he did not tell us about the event after this. So, <laughs> Secretary Walters, will you tell us what type of pizza and what we can expect here in a minute? I apologize. That's the, I missed the, that, talk about burying the lead. Okay. <laughs> pizza, um, cake, Coke, Sprite, the whole nine yards. First floor when we're done. Okay, follow us down, and we're going we're gonna to do the whole nine yards. You can have as much as you want. Okay, so we'll do that as soon as we're done here. There you go. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Walters. Okay, uh, well, we'll open it up to a few questions uh, from the media for our panelists and the legislators, the leaders uh, from the House, the Senate here, Superintendent Hoffmeister. <laughs> uh, it's safe to say that I'm going to sign that bill. I, yeah. <laughs> It, 
it would be pretty bad had I sat up here at this press conference and then went back and vetoed it. So uh, I'm not sure if it's on my desk yet, uh, but uh, our team, our policy team is reading all the bills and we'll be reviewing later on this afternoon. No comment on that yet. Uh, once the bills hit my desk, we'll review them and then we'll get back with you. I, I, I couldn't hear you. Uh, last week, you and the Secretary of Agriculture sent a letter to. Secretary of who? Agriculture. Okay. Well, I, again, we're here to talk about the education of the kids and these bills, and so we'll, we can talk about that at a later time. No, we haven't made a decision on that yet, but we can communicate more uh, down the road. Uh, Representative Dills did send the language over to us. I'm reviewing that now. Thanks, everybody. Thank you all. Can I introduce you to my Yep.